What's going on, man? It's your boy, Jay Holly, and we are back with another episode of Unfiltered with Jesse Holly, episode 61, the Super Bowl edition. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are far too kind. You could have been anywhere in the world, but I'm so glad you are here with me. I am Jesse Holly, the sports talk equivalent of Braille. People feel me when I speak. You guys know what you got to do, man. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button, tell a friend to tell a friend, do all that kind of good stuff, man. Make me a part of your life. But you guys know how I like to get down. I like to give my motivation at the beginning because let's be honest, a lot of you won't be here at the end. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm not for everybody. I get it. I understand it. And you aren't for everybody. But before you go, Find three episodes. By the time you get to this one, 61 of these things will be out. Find three episodes. Listen to them about 15 minutes apiece. After those three episodes of 15 minutes apiece, if you have not liked what you have heard, then get your ears checked and listen to three more episodes. And then three more, and then three more, and three, three, until you figure out that we are made to be with one another. That's just what it is. All right, man, let's jump right into this thing, man. And here is uh, my message for you today. This message comes from uh, one of the greatest, I shouldn't say the greatest, uh, maybe the greatest rapper of all time, depends on how you feel, but one of the greatest, uh, one of our great philosophers of all time. I, I like to think that. Jay-Z. Uh, and Jay-Z said, a wise man once told me, don't argue with fools. Because people from a distance can't tell who is who. A wise man once told me, don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Protect your words. We, we live in a day and a time today where everyone has an opinion. Everyone has something to say. Um, but we just need that at some point in time. You got to just know. Hey, listen, I said what I said. You said what you said. We said what we said. And take it to the bank. Because a lot of people want to get into these verbal spats and these sparring sessions verbally. And, and, and a lot of people, honestly, a lot of people aren't educated enough to speak to you. I know it sounds harsh and I know it may come off as a little bit crude and brash, but there are people who want to get into this tongue wrestling match with you who are not qualified. And if you open up the door to allow them into that conversation, what ends up happening is you now aren't qualified, especially from someone looking from a distance. They can't tell which one of you are actually qualified because they may have heard the fool speak first. So I say to you, protect your peace, protect your space, and understand that everyone isn't worth the verbal quarrel. It, everyone isn't worth the verbal boxing match. Everyone isn't worth your time to uh, formulate sentences and paragraphs and, and, and cognitive thoughts and ideas. You waste your time. And now you've given a stage to fools. And sometimes the fools will then take your stage and attract other fools. So in essence, you help birth more fools. So sometimes silence is the best method to fight with. Sometimes sitting back, not saying a word, is the best attack that you can have. And let the fool leave no doubt. Let them boastfully and, 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 and um, ignorantly say the things that they think the people want to hear. And you 
Just sit back in peace and watch. Because ultimately, the truth will always come to light. And no one or, or, or nothing can ever escape that. So, yeah. Don't waste, don't waste your war. Don't waste your words on a war that it ain't even worth fighting. Let the fool have it. And you'll be at peace. <laughs> All right? All right, man, let's get into this Super Bowl edition. Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. And if we're being honest, like, I know that the Chiefs, they kind of sputtered through the season, but they were the defending champions. And the Niners, they came in raging, roaring, and just kind of boom, boom, boxing their way to this ultimate place, right? They, they, since the season started, most people would have said, at least on the NFC side, if you had to pencil, if you had to pencil in in September, you penciled in on the NFC side. I don't care what team you rooted for. On the NFC side, you penciled in the 49ers. Maybe you had some other contingencies in there, but if on the NFC side, you penciled in the 49ers. You said, you know, maybe the Eagles have something, you know, maybe some other team, maybe the Cowboys would show something. I don't think anyone expected Detroit to do what they did. Kudos to Detroit. But for the most part, coming out of the East, you thought very strongly, let's write the Niners into Vegas. And you wouldn't have been wrong even in September. You wouldn't have been wrong. Um, like that take wouldn't have been a take that was like, oh, you bugging. You might have had more people say that you were bugging if you said, boy, I think Detroit's going to make it to the NFC Championship game. You, more people would have said you were bugging on that take. More people would have said you were bugging if you said to yourself, well, the Cowboys would lose to Green Bay in the first round. Most people probably would have said you're bugging. But I don't think many people would have said that you were bugging if they said, man, I really do think that the Niners are getting back to the Super Bowl on the NFC side. The AFC side, I don't think you would have been wrong if you had said the Chiefs are getting back to the championship. Well, okay, they are the defending champions. All right. But there may have been a little bit more pushback. There may have been a little bit more, but, 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 but wait. Well, now, what about Joe Burrow? I mean, Joe Burrow did take them out a year, uh, uh, two years ago. But, 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 what about Buffalo? Josh Allen and company are poised to finally get over the hump. But, 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 what about, what about, what about Baltimore? Okay. Lamar Jackson does give you a compelling case on what could possibly happen. Right? If you're saying all of this in September, those teams that I mentioned, people wouldn't have said that you were bugging. You could have even said, but wait, now Miami has something going on down there. Oh, okay. Now, that, you, you won't get, now if you said, boy, that Houston team going to get to the divisional round, people might have said you're bugging. People might have said, not, not, not this year. Not, not Houston, not this year. You might have got your bugging if you said, boy, man, Cleveland, with no Deshaun Watson, made the playoffs. People might have said that you were bugging, that Cleveland was going to make a run at this thing, and, and people might have said you're bugging. But I don't think many people would have said you're bugging if you said in September, late August, early September, that, yo, I think the Chiefs are going to be in Vegas in February. So when you look at these two teams, it's, it's not this off-the-wall thought process. Both of these teams are more than worthy of 
their position in the Super Bowl. That's fair to say. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think I'm bugging saying that. I don't think you're bugging thinking that. Now, as the season began to progress, if you thought that about the Niners, it started to show itself that okay, this team when healthy can can do it. Brock Purdy's playing. He, he's living up to the hype that we thought about. Then there was a little lull, and then they got back to it. Now, for the Chiefs, it didn't look as promising. It didn't look as favorable, right? It didn't look as favorable. You started seeing Baltimore do its thing. Houston's kind of working through some things. There was a moment in time in the course of the middle of the season, Denver began to pick it up. They had went on a six, seven game win streak, right? Pittsburgh was flirting with a little bit of kind of like, okay, we can play a little bit maybe. Buffalo was going. Miami was shot out the rocket. It looked as if, whoa, this Tua thing, this Mike, uh, Mike uh, uh, McDaniels thing, this Tyreek Hill thing, it's, it's, it's picking up steam. Joe Bower got hurt, and so uh, that, that kind of, you know, a little bit killed, but then they had a little bit of moment in time where they kind of had a little bit of spark. There were, the, there were moments in the season where you could have went a different direction and said, nah, Kansas City has finally come home to roost. The days of just saying Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and others would get it done. The others were dropping passes, not running the right routes. Patrick Mahomes didn't look as supermanish. There were all the talks and the conversations about, is Travis Kelsey really serious about football now? He left the sister. He got it with Swift. They're, 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 they're moonlighting all over the city. They're private planes. They're dipping in and out. Travis Kelsey's at the World Series. I, I mean, there's a bunch of different distractions that are happening at this time. Injuries are happening. Players aren't performing. Mahomes looked pedestrian. He looks mortal. And there were questions. Have we come to a place where the Chiefs now have fallen back to earth with everyone else? The thoughts of just you can put any and everybody in a Chiefs uniform offensively as long as you have Patrick Mahomes that it would work out just And people started to question it. Rightfully so. And by the hairs on their chinny chin chins, they just continue to work and work and work. And they found themselves in the playoffs. But for Kansas City, it was in a very unfamiliar place. Because since Patrick Mahomes became a Kansas City Chief and the starting quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, the Chiefs had never played a playoff game on the road. Patrick Mahomes had 14 playoff games and never played one of you know, the Super Bowls a neutral site, but never played outside of Kansas City in a playoff game. And that was about to change. And it almost looked like, well, this pedestrian come back down to earth, Kansas City Chiefs football team, while being led by Andy Reid, no Eric Bieniemy's in there. They're, they're questioning the, the leadership, you know, in the locker room. There's no one that's keeping people accountable. The receivers aren't all there. The running backs are in and out of the lineup. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening. The road to the Super Bowl looks very bleak. The Buffalo Bills had begun to pick up the pace. They had to play the Miami uh, 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 um, Dolphins in the first round. While they had that game at home, it looked like, well, they still got to go to Buffalo. That could be a challenge. 
And then at this point in time, we had all come to the conclusion that the new bullies of the National Football League was the boys from Baltimore. The roughest, toughest dundadas resided in Baltimore. And in order for you to get to Vegas, you had to go see Omar in them. You had to go into the wire. Not the way that the Kansas City Chiefs did. They even got to take, they got to play Miami, Buffalo, and Baltimore. That's a gauntlet. But it seems as if when they got into the playoffs, there was this shift. There was this shift in what I believe is the greatest quarterback that i ever seen. No, he's not the winningest quarterback. That hands down goes to Tom Brady, and Tom Brady is a GOAT. But there was this shift of, I'm not human. I'm not like y'all. In fact, everything that you thought I was during the regular season, I'm going to show you I'm still the baddest SOB around. And Patrick Mahomes took his game back to that extraterrestrial level. And he said, Miami? Yeah, okay. He said, oh, y'all want to see another shootout with Josh? He ain't me. I'm him. I'm here. Oh, y'all want us to go to Baltimore? No problem. They don't have enough dudes to scare me. And all of a sudden, you saw the greatest quarterback of our time perform. Making play after play after play. And so now you have these two teams in the Super Bowl. And the stage is set. It is one that I think we all will enjoy. I think you have so many compelling storylines in this matchup. And, and, and I, wanna, I want us to go and I want us to break some things down. I mean, there's a lot on the line for both football teams. Kansas City are looking to repeat and continue on this dynasty. The Chiefs in the last five years have been to the Super Bowl four times. There was a lot on the line for the Chiefs. Winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls will put them in a rare encasing of company. It's only happened eight other times. The 1966-67 Packers, the 72-73 Dolphins, the 74-75 Steelers, 78-79 Steelers, 88-89 um, Niners, 92-93 Cowboys, 97-98 uh, Broncos, 2003-2004 Patriots. 19 years since we've had back-to-back -back Super Bowl winners. They are in line. That's a big company. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only been done eight times in the history of the National Football League. They are one game away from putting themselves in mighty fine company. We look at those programs, 
right? We look at we, we look at those programs as being some of the most renowned and historic programs in the National Football League. Story programs. With, 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 with Hall of Fame players who have stories upon stories upon stories. So it's a lot on the line for the Kansas City Chiefs. Who, by the way, can 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 be and deserving deservingly so belong in that company. It's not like it's one of these things where you're like, well, boy, they don't quite belong. Like, which one of these things is not like the other? Which one of these things are not the same? Right? It's like when you start looking at championships, you're like, okay, well, if the Yankees have done it and, and, and Boston, like, they, it feels like the programs are those programs who belong in that conversation. Hey, I feel like they belong in that conversation. But the Niners, they, 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 are, they, they are looking to do something. The Niners, their history talks about, what are they? They got five rings, the Niners? Like, history? Yeah, second all-time, Super Bowl wins with five. And seven trips. Four of their wins were in the 80s. The last one was in 1994. They went to three straight NFC Championship games from 2011 to 2013, another in 2009. And in the past three years, this is just the third Super Bowl trip in that span. They haven't won one yet. So they're looking at this and saying, brother, we have been. You feel me knocking? Let a Niner in. That's what they. Will you feel me knocking? Let a Niner in. We want to be back in that conversation they've done all the necessary steps they built the program they they like you know they, they they revitalized things they went through some lowly years they got the coach and they went through quarterbacks and and they went through players and they traded and they do all they took the right steps they didn't skip steps they it wasn't like they just popped out of nowhere they took the necessary steps and here they find themselves again and if you watch this program or any of the other programs that I own, I have been a fan of both of these teams. I am a fan of greatness, but I, in particular, have been a fan of the Niners since about like week nine, week eight. I was, I was like, I was like, I was like, you know what? When healthy, nobody can beat this Niners team. And the Ravens was like, well. Sit down. Be humble. But the Niners took their, they took their whooping and they, they kept on ticking. So when you break this thing down, right, it always comes down to a couple of different factors. And we can talk about this for hours upon hours upon hours. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, belabor points that a lot of you know already. But. When it comes down to, and both of these teams have some very compelling cases why they should win this game. But as always, it starts where? The most important position on the field. And it's been that way since the inception of the game. You got a quarterback, you got a chance. And like I said earlier, we looked at Patrick Mahomes this year. A lot of his season this, this year was a lot of his career lows. A career lows. Career low in touchdown rate. Career highs in, uh, I think, interceptions and passing yardage and ra Raiders in regular season games. He also read the second worst marks in career touchdown passes, 27. I mean, there's a lot of lows that, that Patrick Mahomes has had this season, but... Unbutton the shirt, loosen up the tie. He stepped inside the booth. Hemi showed up. Hemi Mahomes has showed up. So while the regular season didn't look Mahomish, 
All right, the, the MVP level, the 45 touchdowns, 50 touchdowns, 45, 5,000 yards, and, and, and the, I don't think he really had a bunch of wow-type games where he just, they had were some, but it wasn't like far and away Patrick Mahomes. Like, when you think about it, like, take a just moment to think about this. Look at the course of the season. Can you remember a time during the season where when they were talking about the MVP candidates, they did not speak of Patrick Mahomes. You heard some Josh Allen. You heard Dak Prescott. You heard Lamar Jackson. You heard Brock Purdy. They were even throwing C.J. Stroud in the mix at Sunday. They were like, well, look, hey, look, I know he's young. He's a rookie. But, hey, what he's doing in Houston, got to put him in the mix. We didn't hear Patrick Mahomes' name in that conversation all year I think that's been one of the situations where you're like wait I don't think we've ever witnessed that in the six years that he's been a starter in this league but here he is here he is in the biggest moments on the biggest stage he is him. But then you look at Brock Purdy. And conversely, Brock Purdy, who everyone, I guess, reluctantly so, Mr. You know, he always gets the moniker Mr. Relevant, the last pick in the NFL draft in 2022. He was an MVP candidate. He will probably finish second or third somewhere in that conversation, top three or four. In the MVP candidacy. We all listened and heard when um, um, Cam Newton called him a game manager. That was the, that was the big conversation. Game manager. And I've always, like, the, 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 the yeah, he is. Like, there is a difference. Patrick Mahomes is a game changer. Put him, in that, put him in that shelf that Dion talks about. He's a game changer. He's a force multiplier. Yeah. Brock Purdy's a game. I'm not. The, the, we take this game manager conversation in the, in the, in the, in the, and we take those words, we combine them together, we make a compound uh, 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 sentence or word or whatever you want to say, game manager. We, we put that in the box and we, we give it this negative connotation. As if being a, and I always tell people, if your kids rode the bus to school, stand at the corner, bus pulls up, you get in the car, you get a, your kids get on the bus. Now, now you're standing outside with your robe and your Stanley Tumbler, right? And your bonnet a little bit crooked and your house shoes is out there. You know what I'm saying? Or you out there in your moo moo, you got your hand over your breast because they're a little bit cold in the morning and your nipples are showing. But when your kid gets on that bus, the last thought in your mind is, boy, this, this bus driver isn't going to get my kid to school. There is a lot of responsibility on the bus driver. The bus driver carries some of the most precious cargo to and from school. Because in your mind, at the end of the day, you're going to be standing right back on that same corner and that same bus you're hoping comes whipping around the corner drop off your precious cargo. I mean, sounds pretty important to me. <laughs> right? Sounds pretty important to me. Or you can go Airbus, right? Uh, all right, he's a game manager. He's a bus driver. Well, I want, the, I want the person in charge of the Airbus to get me where I need to get to. So while... Patrick may be a, a, a force multiplier, a game changer. There's nothing wrong with the game manager. Just two different responsibilities. Not Patrick's is no greater than Brock's, and Brock's is no greater than Patrick's. In the grand scheme of it all, it has to work out for the betterment of the team. 
So Brock was labeled a game manager, and some people took that as this negative connotation, but all they did was just continue to win and win and win and win and put up numbers upon numbers upon numbers, and they found themselves in the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy, until that loss to the Ravens, was in the lead to win the MVP. He was in the lead. And then it kind of turned. It was like, well, well, gotta go to Pat, gotta go to uh, Lamar Jackson now. But he was in the con- like he was leading the conversation. So when you look at these two quarterback matchups, yes, you're gonna say, and I've said it, and I don't want to be a hypocrite and trust and believe you me. I have been going about this all week, day long. I've been going at this for a while because you do have the greatest quarterback that I've ever seen in my own eyes. I ain't talking about watching the highlights and all that kind of stuff. Like, you talk about he, he can do it all. He could do it all. And he got a dad bod. That makes it even more worse. Like, it's even it's one thing. When you, when you watch Michael Vick in his prime and Michael Vick took his shirt off, boy, he was cut up. He was cut. You was like, man, you know what? That dude is an athlete. You know what I'm saying? When you see when you see certain dudes, even Kurt Cousins, when he put the chain on, you know, Kurt Cobain and all that, he's like, you know what, Kurt? He not. TB12 turned his body. Patrick Mahomes has a dad bod. I'm not looking at the man, but that brother got a dad bod. That got to piss you off even more. Because you're like, this joker don't even look athletic. And he carving you up. And then the daddy getting out there with a cigar and saying, who is smoking on that pack? You got to hear that. <laughs> And his brother, his brother is pop locking into TikTok and his brother doing all this and, 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 and all this. And, and now his, 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 his wife, he's up in the suite and, and she got handshakes going on with Taylor Swift. And dad bod Mahomes is whooping yo. Tough deal. Same thing with Brock Purdy. Look at Brock Purdy. If Brock Purdy walked through a mall. He would look like an average civilian. But in Kyle Shanahan's offense, he's John Wick. And with those weapons, see, John John Wick is good, but when he pulling out those weapons, paya, 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 paya. Without the weapons, he's he's just a stringy haired dude in a black suit. Brock Purdy looked like a regular old dude. Then he turned around and hand the ball off to 23. And then he throw the ball to number 19. And then he throw the ball to George Kittle. And then he throw the ball to Br- Oh. Now he like Lonzo. I'm surgical with that thing. So when you look at the two quarterbacks, I mean, yeah, sure, absolutely. Like If, if they're just going head-to-head, one guy is a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. He goes on the side of the Hall of Fame that Dion talks about. Where Dion's at, where LT's at, where Jerry Rice is at, where, where, where names, Bo Jack, those type names. He has, he's going over there. But I ain't talking about the future. Remember in Little Giants where they talked about uh, um, um, what's the coach name? Was it Rick Moranis? Rick Rick Moranis. And he talked about one time. And the kids started looking around there and saying, "I remember, I, I I beat my, I was racing my brother." And they're like, "Your brother?" And, and, and his brother was like, "And like I, we were racing down so and so Cherry something hill, and I beat him one time." I'm not saying that Brock Purdy has to go out there and be a first ballot Hall of Famer, being in the wing that Deion Sanders is talking about with him and LT and Jerry Rice and, 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 the, and the likes of those type dudes. One time. That's it. And if you can do it one time, your name is etched in history forever. So if there's a flat-out conversation about quarterbacks, absolutely every single time Patrick Mahomes will win that race on any day that ends in the letter Y. Without a shadow of a doubt, that goes to Patrick Mahomes. And then you talk about 
coaching. Now, this is a good one. This is this is this is a good one because I mean we're gonna put some respect on Andy Reid name now. There will be no Andy Reid disrespect. All tree y'all. We're gonna put we gonna put respect with a K. Respect on old Andy's name. Andy's one of arguably One of the greatest coaches in NFL history. I know that coaches are always uh, judged on wins. But behind Belichick, in, in my time, I'm 40. I'm a man. In my time, Andy Reid, he's probably second behind Bill Belichick. For all that he's done when he was in Philadelphia and then what he's done so far here at Kansas City. He's 2-2 two on two Super Bowls. I mean, Kansas City, they, they aren't who they are without Andy Reid. He came in and injected life into a franchise that, that, that kind of had a little bit of a rich history, had some time there with Joe Montana, on his, you know, the the kind of the farewell tour of Joe Montana, had some good years in there, but nothing like this with Andy Reid. So we're gonna put we're gonna put respect on old Andy's name now. But as far as the new coaches, oh, Kyle Shanahan is. Maybe. The best offensive, maybe the best, one of the best young offensive minds in the game. Because I can't put him above Andy, but I'm saying out of the young crew, if Andy's the OG and everybody under Andy, yeah, I, I think I, I think I think there's Kyle and then there's like McVay. And then there's like McDaniel's and 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 Lafleur, and there's and there's levels to it. But but Kyle, I mean, that Mike's son, it's Mike Shanahan's son, who is in his rightful self, Mike Shanahan, the owner of three Super Bowl rings. Or two. He won two or three? Two as a head coach, I believe, right? Then he went one in, I think two or three, whatever Mike won. Um, but yeah. So who does the coaching ads go to? You know what? I'm going to say it's a wash. Would I be crazy to say that, Tay? Would I be crazy to say it's a wash? Coaching wash. You got two of the best minds in the game. Right now, it, right now, Andy Reid, I get, I get it. Andy Reid's the OG. Well, coordinators, no matter No, because they're both the offensive coordinators. DC. DC. Mm. We're going, we're going, we're talking about the head coaches. Okay. I'm going to say it's a wash. I'm going to say Kyle Shanahan, while, while, while Andy is the OG, I'm going to say Kyle is, he the little OG. You was about to say something. Two. Two. Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan Two as a head coach? Did he get one as an assistant in San Fran? Check that for me. He might have been an assistant in, Shan in, 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 in San Fran. I could be bugging. That was in the 90s. I don't think. No? I, don't know what you think. I mean, the 90s do have two bowls in there. Yeah. Check that for me. I ain't crazy. I'm just a little bit off. But I'm going to go coaches. It's a wash. As a whole staff, it's a wash because they both have done amazing things. And, and, and Kyle Shanahan has been able to get, I would say, more. He does. He does. Uh, 94. Come on. Come on, Jay Holly. 94. Come on, Jay Holly. 
So Kyle has Mike has three. Two as a head coach, one as an assistant. Nine versus Chargers. Yeah. yeah. I know I ain't crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jay Holly. Look at that. That that ginkgo you've been taking them vitamins you've been taking. It's been helping the old mind of yours, Jay Holly. But, uh, you know, Kyle has gotten a lot more. I mean, granted, you got to deal with Jimmy Garoppolo and Brock Purdy and others, but Kyle has done it. He's done it. He's made his team more than respectable with Mr. Irrelevant. But that doesn't take away from Andy Reid. It just so happened he saw the talent in Patrick Mahomes. The thing is, a lot of teams could have had Patrick Mahomes. No slight to my boy, but they took Mitch Trubisky before him. And then I think they took Deshaun Watson before him. And then they got Patrick Mahomes. So there's a lot of teams, there's a lot of teams that missed out on Superman. Evaluate how you evaluate. Andy Reid said, that's him. And they had Alex Smith, who was a above average starting NFL quarterback. And they said, the kid is different. So I'll say it's a wash. It's a wash. Now we go weapons. Of course, for the Chiefs, you got Taylor Swift, boo. You got Rasheed Rice. And then you got Isaiah Pacheco. Yes? Yes. Right? Which is impressive. Not too many names that you would think. Isaiah, Isaiah Pacheco this season. 935 yards, 7 touchdowns. Not bad. Not bad. Rasheed Rice, 79 receptions, 938 yards, 7 touchdowns. Not bad. He's ready to come up. And then, you know, Travis Kelsey for a tight end. 93 catches, 984 yards, five touchdowns. It's his first time finishing below 1,000 yards since 2015. Maybe he was spending too much time in them streets. But he too, when it came time to play in the playoffs, in three playoff games, three, three playoff games, three playoff wins, 23 receptions, 262 yards, three touchdowns. Last week, 11 for 11 for 100 and something yards and a touchdown. He shows up. Now, here's where I think the Niners have the advantage. If we're going off pure weapons, Christian McCaffrey might be the best non quarterback, non quarterback on the football field. Best player on the football field. Christian McCaffrey. If you took the quarterbacks off the field and you latched, you lined up player for player, Christian McCaffrey, I think, trumps everybody. Kelsey, Pacheco, Rice, Deep, everybody. He, too, is a force multiplier. Then you have Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuels. In that mix, you got George Kittle. In that mix, the Niners offensively they have, they have more weapons. Let's be honest. If there's been a knock on the on the on the on the on the Chiefs this year, it's been, boy, Patrick Mahomes is dragging some bums out there every week. He has put those bums on his back and he has carried these bums to the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. When 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 McCaffrey's been out, when Debo's been out. This 49ers team has not looked good. Debo is another guy. 25, 225, 225 rushing yards, five touchdowns on the season. Another 900, 892 yards, seven touchdowns receiving, 60 passes. I mean, he is he is a weapon. Brandon Ayuk, another breakout year, 75 catches. 1,300 yards, 17.9 yards per catch. Ranked second in the NFL. He is a, he, he's a, he's a big play threat, and he will block you to the Gatorade. You hear me? 
he will block you to the Gatorade. He and, and Jawan Jennings, they going to block. George Kittle, too. And then there's Christian McCaffrey, who was damn near, uh, you know, at some point in time, he was talking about breaking a record. He was in the MVP category this year. So we're talking about weapons. The Niners have the better weapons, hands down. The Niners have the outright, it ain't no competition. They have the better weapons. Defense. The Chiefs, while all of the pageantry and the attention is on the offense and Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and all the Swifties and all of that, all of that, this defense has been damn good. Led by perennial pro bowler Chris Jones. Good linebacker play. Trent McDuffie has come on as one of the most talented cornerbacks in the league. Legarius Sneed, a pro bowler. They've they've found guys that have shown that that's that, that's shown up. Uh, the linebacker Gay, the linebacker, uh, what's the other kid? Uh, uh, Gay's one of the linebacker. He didn't play. Last week, I'm sure he'll play in the Super Bowl. He's like a 4-4 guy, 4-3 guy, linebacker. I like 230, 240. Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton. Drew, Drew Tranquil. Tranquil. And there's another guy. There's, there's, there's Gay. Gay. Yeah. 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 Tough. They're tough. They are, they, are, they are solid on the outside. They're solid up the middle. They're solid up front. The Niners... They got the reigning defensive player of the year on their team. They went out and added J, J, uh, uh, Javon Hargrave. They went and traded for Chase Young. Hmm. Would you, hmm. I mean, I think the thing is kind of finally really out on Chase Young. That it, I don't think Chase Young really likes football. But whatever. I, you know, I think Chase Young was just so big and so athletic. They was like, hey, you should play football. And he was like, okay. And I became, he became really good at it. I don't think Chase Young really enjoys the what it takes to be a good football player. The Niners defense had arguably the best duo of linebackers, whether that you, some people may say it was uh, uh, um, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, Patrick Queen, excuse me. Others might have said, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, hey, hey, oh. Fred, Vo- Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw it was the best two to do it. Their safety play had struggled. When they lost Hufunga uh, to the torn ACL early in the year, that, that's like Troy Polamalu 2.0. They, quite, they weren't quite as good in that back end. Not bad, but they weren't as good as they were. Traverius Ward, if you're a Cowboys fan, you heard that name before. All right, we just give Pro Bowlers away. This is another good one, man. This is another good one. But but honestly, I, I would I would I would I would say that maybe Chris Jones is the best player on defense overall. I know that Nick Bosa is the reign defensive player of the year, but but that Chris that Chris Jones is he's a, he's a he's a headache. But I give the I give the defensive edge to the Niners. And they're going to need to play their very, very best game. And the thing that makes it difficult to go up against Patrick Mahomes is that you have to play the initial play and then the Mahomes play. you got to play defense twice in one play. Right? There's this initial drop back from Patrick Mahomes. One 1,000, two 1,000, first read, second read. And then there's a scramble ability of Patrick Mahomes while he can still make every throw off platform. So now you have, as a defender, you have to make sure that I'm rushing in my lanes properly. As a cornerback or safety or linebacker dropping in the covers, I have to make sure I stay glued to my man for that extra two or three seconds because Patrick Mahomes is back there doing something magical 
And 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 they have this whole backyard football thing now, especially he and Travis Kelsey, where they just go and make stuff up. That's they, they have that they have that 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 telepathy that they can just go and make stuff up on the fly in the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth second of the play. So you gotta play defense twice a lot of times against the Chiefs because of the versatility and the scramble ability and the arm talent of Patrick Mahomes. But I do think the Niners have the better defense, in my personal opinion. X Factors. George Kittle for the Niners. I think he what what George does in the run game, he's tough, he's physical, he wants to block you. He wants to finish you. But then he can also sneak out of there. And maybe maybe I might even go Kyle Juchek. He's another one. He wants to block you. He will block you. Smart, intelligent, knows all the everywhere. Blocking assignments, pass routes. He does everything. And for the Chiefs, MVS, Valdez Scantling, he made the game clutch play. And, 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 it's, and I say X Factor because if you watch the Kansas City Chiefs in the season, Boy, did he let them down. Whew. He had some major drops and some major games where it was critical. I don't know if Kadarius Tony is going to play or not. All I'm saying is that they played much better with Kadarius Tony injured. He came out with his little thing last week about it was fake, whatever. Kadarius Tony, whatever. So I think X factors for the Chiefs. For me, I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, 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 Valdez Scantling. And for the Niners, I'll go Kyle Juchek. Kyle had a couple big catches of that comeback against the Lions. You forget about him sometimes because you're worried about Ayuk and, and Debo and Christian McCaffrey is out there and George Kittle doing his thing. And you're trying to figure out all of it. And then, oh, here's 44. Seemed out. He had the one catch on the sideline where he did the toe tap, the Tony toe tap. That's for fullback. A fullback had the wherewithal and the hands and the skill ability to catch it with his hands and, and to toe tap, he he, Michael Jackson lean on the sideline for a first down. You can't, you can't add that up. That's not, that's not always quantifiable. The Chiefs can win the Super Bowl in a multitude of ways. But I think the biggest factor is Patrick Mahomes just being special. If Patrick Mahomes is special and the defense is, is decent, they don't have to be like this. They don't have to be the, 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 the 2,000 Ravens or the 85 Bears. Just be decent. Patrick Mahomes is special enough. But I think if the Niners, if, if Brock Purdy is able to run the system that Kyle Shanahan puts in place and it's on time and it's on schedule, I think he can win the game. But all in all, I think it'll be a great Super Bowl. I, I think it'll be one that we'll talk about. It'll be an instant classic. I think it's one that when we look at it 10, 15 years from now, we'll go, whoa, what a game. I feel that. I do feel that in my heart. But now it comes down to making a decision. And boy, There are times where I don't want to be me. I don't want to sit here and have to make this decision. I don't. Because I'm like, my mind is telling me no, but my, I feel, <laughs> is R. Kelly singing R. Kelly at all limits? Is that all limits? Whatever. And I, I have to tell you, I got to be I got to be unfiltered and honest with you. Tay and I we've argued back and I not argue but we've we've debated back and forth on why and what and and and, and I've said some things and, and and he said some things and you may have persuaded me already on the show. <laughs> right? Like we we've gone back and forth. And but I have to tell you like I've been I've been nine I've been bang bang Niners gang for like since week 9. And that's what my heart says. My heart says, when healthy, the Niners are the best team in the National Football League. 
They are a symbol to win a Super Bowl. But my head. <laughs> my head says, are you fool? Did your cockamamie eyes not watch 15 last week? Are you deaf, blind, or dumb, boy? You just said he was the greatest quarterback you've ever seen in your lifetime. And all of those things are true. They are. And this is tough. Uh, this is I'm not this is not this dramatic pause. This is not this, you know, climactic thing that I do with my voice and and to pull you in there. Is it working now? Is it working? But it's not that. It's not, it's I'm not doing this crescendo type thing. I am really, really, really struggling with this decision. And I'm so glad that I'm not a gambling man or betting on the games because I would probably just keep my money in the pocket. Because I don't know. But I have to make a decision. And once I put it in the microphone, as I learned recently, <laughs> it's out there. And anybody can pick it up and listen to it and like it and, and, and chop it up and put it any way they want to. It's a wild world that we live in. You gotta be careful what you say, Jay Holly. But if I have to make a decision, which I do, because it's the Super Bowl preview. If I have to make a decision, I'm going to stand on business. I'm going to stand on business. Give me the Niners. I'm standing on business. I'm standing on business. I'm standing on business. Give me the Niners. They defeat Superman, Andy Reid, and the Kansas City Chiefs in a thriller, in a spectacular game. Give me the Niners. I'm going to keep saying it to try to convince myself. Six. Six point game. I think Debo has a day. I do. That boy Patty Mahomes is a bad man though. But we've seen him become mortal all season long. He has it in him. But he also can unbutton his shirt and loosen up the tie. And fly around in them little draws and a cape. But I'm going Niners by six. You're 2023-2024 world champions. That's it. That's my show. That's all I got for you. Remember, Jay-Z said it. What did he say? I gotta write it. I, write it right. I wanna make sure I say it right. Go back to my notes. He's a great philosopher. A wise man told me don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Save your word battle for people that are intelligent enough. Don't argue with fools. Not worth your time. All right, man. That's it for me. I appreciate you guys. Love you. Remember, like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Mr. Fourth and Long on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go to our clips page, man. Check out all the clips that we have up there from all the episodes that we've done with Barry Church, with Patrick Creighton, with, with Nate Newton, with, uh, with, with Tiffany Gomez, with uh, Derek Holland, with Jeff Cavanaugh. Go check those clips out, man. Go, go to our YouTube page, Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. 
We got some we got some fire up there, man. Head over to Fanatics View and 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 like that page and and all of that stuff, man. And then and then share it. Share it on your socials. Share it in your family group chat. Uh, share it in your work group chat. Tell your boss, hey boss, while I'm while I'm at work, here's what I'm listening to. You should join in. It's worth your time. And I'm already getting paid on the clock, so you might want to know what I'm listening to. Maybe we can have a conversation in the, in, the, in the break room. All right, man, that's my show, man. That's my Super Bowl preview. Chiefs, Niners, I got the Niners by six in a thriller, man. Hey, it's going to be lit. It's going to be live, man. But y'all be careful, man, until we meet again, man. Uh, I love you guys. You know what you got to do, man. All right? Eliminate the contingencies. I'm out.